Good morning, good morning, grace and peace to each and every one of you who have chosen to join us this morning on Morning Manor. This is Michael H. Odom Sr. I am the senior pastor of Whole Life Community Church. Amen. I'm also the founder of the O-Factor as well. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning to those who are on Instagram, those who are on Facebook Live with us this morning. It is 7 a.m. in the morning on this Thursday morning. It is 65 degrees, uh, 65 degrees at 7 a.m. A little scary to me. Amen. Good morning, uh, Sister Tammy, uh, Minister Yolanda, and Deacon Shelley. We thank you for joining us. Amen. This morning. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you who decided to be a part of our worship experience this morning at 7 a.m. Amen. Uh, we're looking for those who join us over here on Facebook Live. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you, you, and you. Amen. To God be the glory for all the things that he is doing. Amen. Good morning, Mother Tisdale. Good morning to you. Good morning, Brother James. Amen. We welcome you guys, each and every one of you, to be a part of what we're doing. Again, we ask that you please share and tag someone in this. Wake somebody up. Send them a message and say, listen, Morning Manor is on. Amen. There's a word from God. Amen. And you need to be a part of it. Amen. Get your day started right. We need to start our day right. Good morning, Sister Felicia. Good morning. Good to see you. Amen. Get your morning started right. Amen. In the things of God. Get the strength that you need. Amen. And we're going to talk about some of those things this morning. Amen. And these, 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 these last and evil days that I know for hundreds of years, uh, the saints have been saying that. Good morning, Mother Pat. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. We thank you guys for your love. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your prayers and all that you do for the kingdom of God to push forward the agenda of God. Amen. And one of the things that I am learning, I am learning personally, amen, and, and ex through experience, amen, uh, this is the time you really need to have a relationship with God, a real relationship with God, a real, and, and it, it may sound a little facetious sometimes, but it's not facetious. It's really, it's really about being honest with yourself and what, what salvation really means to you. Amen. Good morning, Sister Cindy. Amen. Brother Raul. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Brother Raul is so funny. We have a men's group text. Raul keeps us laughing. Amen. Such a wonderful brother, wonderful family. Amen. Thank God for him being with us this morning. Amen. Um, joining us on Morning Manor. And we're going to continue uh, in our lesson that we started on the other day. And we started in Isaiah Isaiah 55, 6, and 11. Um, we're not going to read the whole thing this morning, but what we want to do is give it to you in part. And we want to continue to talk about uh, uh, what, what are you looking for? Oh, no, I'm sorry, not what you're looking for. Seek him while he might be found. Seek him while he may be found. Seek him while he may be found. Good morning, Sister Teacher down in Philly. Good morning, Cousin Pam. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. God is so good to us. God is so good to us. He's really, really good to us. Amen. So in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, in the 55th chapter, and uh, let's start at the, I want to start the 6th of the 5th. Let me start at the 6th. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Wardell, my pastor. God bless you. That's my brother right there. God bless you. I have to reach out. Thank you. And again, um, happy, not really happy, well, happy belated Veterans Day to each and every one of you that have served in the military, your family. My dad served in the military. Amen. I um, thank God for that. We thank God for my brothers. Uh, my brother Wardell, who served, as well as uh, my brother Herschel. Amen. Amen. All of them who have served in the military. Good morning, Brother Derek. Good morning. Good to see you guys. Amen. And, and we want to grab this word. We want to share as we come together. Let this be a community of believers. Amen. Let this be a community of believers uh, that come together for strength. For no, if no other reason, come together for some strength. Amen. In these days. Amen. Good morning, Sister Donna. Amen. We thank you for, for joining us. Amen. Come together for strength. We need to, sounds like I need strength. I need strength. I need strength. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. In Isaiah 55, in the fifth verse, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. While he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. While he is near. Amen. And, and, and basically what that means is inquire, request for God while he may be claiming him. And we said just by necessity, and by right, by necessary, because it's needed. I need God. I need God. How many of y'all need God in your, in your life right now? I need, see, see we, we, we need God, but we really need God right now. We really, really need God right now. We need God to strengthen our minds, to strengthen our hearts. Amen. Um, God has shifted. He has totally shifted. And I say, God, he has totally shifted some things and he's trying to get our attention. 
tell somebody God is trying to get your attention. He said, the sixth, the seventh verse says, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. Let go of that stuff. And, and that's, that's what, what it's saying. It, it's saying that like, let, let go of some things. There's some things we need to let go. Um, we have to be very careful uh, emotionally. Let's say that. We have to be very careful emotionally because the climate is hot. It's just a hot climate. There's a lot been going on for months and months and it's and it's wearing it's wearing us down. Amen. It is. It's honestly wearing us down. Amen. But we will not give up. We will not uh, throw in the towel. Amen. Um, because you can't get a vacation like you want to get a vacation. You can't get away the way you want to get away. You go away, you're intense because of the fact that, you know, you want to be very careful when you stand at and, and what you're doing as well. So you want to be very careful. It said, let the wicked forsake his ways. In other words, give it up, let it go. Amen. And it says, unrighteous his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God and he will abundantly pardon. This is why one of the reasons I asked you to share uh, this, this, this broadcast. And the reason being is because I need someone to hear this word. Maybe someone whose heart may not be as where, where yours is at, but what they need, they need to hear God. They may have backslid. They may have turned their back on God. Maybe they had tripped and maybe they had slipped. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're falling short. Because what I'm seeing is that a lot of us are not working in our full capacity. And when I say we mentally and emotionally have gotten worn down and the enemy comes in and gets, gets us very lax. And because we have not physically, for the most part, many of us have not been in person in worship, we do not have the strength to sustain ourselves on our own. And the enemy has worn us down. And the one thing about the enemy, and this is an analogy that people use or a thing that people have used for years, they talk about the frog and the frog in the, in the water. Right. And he talks about the frog and how the frog, if you put in the water, it is not conducive to his body temperature. He would quickly just jump out. And that's how the enemy does us. He knows that if you see him coming, you're going to run away. You're not going to entertain him for the most part. And prayerfully, we don't. Amen. But what ended up happening, Sister Tsushima, is that they have put the water, the enemy put the water on a situation or the climate at a temperature that's conducive to where you are. Is at a temperature that's conducive to where you are. And then what he does, he comes in, because the Bible tells us also in the book of Jude that they came in unaware. They came in unaware, which they crept in. That's the word they use. They crept in unaware. And the word crept uh, means to come along the side. It means they're not going to come in the front door. They're not going to be obvious who they're in. They came along the, the side way. They came in a way where you didn't pay much attention to them. You didn't notice them. You're looking at the front door the whole time because most burglars, most burglars, don't come to the front door. They may every now and then, but most times they're gonna come to a back door, they can come to a window where you don't expect them to come. And that is how the enemy works. And usually the reason why he's able to get in to your home, into your heart, amen, is because we have not secured ourselves. We have not secured ourselves. So we find ourselves in a compromised position. Amen. We have compromised. Whether it's your car, whether it's your your, your home, whether it's you as a person, your heart. For the Bible tells us to guard our hearts, amen, to guard our hearts, amen, with all diligence because out of it flows the issue of life. What you allow to get in your heart will come out, amen? Now, listen, you don't usually, you usually don't slip in one day. You usually don't fall in one day. The process of falling or getting out of the grace of God is over a period of time. And it's so subtle that you didn't even notice it. You start to let down your guards because the enemy, let me tell you, he's going to hang out. He's going to hang out in front of your door as long as he can. He's going to wait for you after work. The enemy is a stalker. He is definitely a stalker. He will He will, He will. will hit you up on your phone. He'll find every device. He, the enemy will change it. Oh, God. The enemy would change his name. He would change his Facebook page several times to keep connected to you. And for some of y'all, that's a reality. You have that where people have stalked you and changed their name, came as pretending someone else, and they eventually start and they wear you down. They crept in unaware. Amen. Back to the frog. What they do with the frog, they put a man in a condition, an environment that seems conducive, especially, let me say this to you guys, especially where your appetite is. Where your appetite is, wherever your appetite is, that is how the enemy is going to approach you. It's not just your appetite, where there are wounds. And, 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 and I was, I'm going to talk about that. Where there are wounds in your life, Pastor um, um, Gloria Moody, where there's wounds in your life, the unresolved issues, unresolved 
issues. I'm going I'm to state it. Unresolved issue that you have not dealt with, you have not handled. Amen. Or either way, it's like, well, I didn't, I didn't know that this was an underlying condition that I had. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we have suppressed it. We have not dealt with it. But it rears its head because usually when you find yourself in a compromised position or not achieving the things that you, you, you want to achieve, part of this is part of what's happening. So the enemy takes that flame and he puts it to a temperature, to a temperature that's conducive, that makes you feel comfortable. You don't feel threatened. You don't feel, go back. I think it's Greek mythology. I don't even know. It's got to be Greek mythology uh, where they talked about the Trojan horse. Remember the Trojan horse? And they were at battle. And what they did was they built this giant wooden Trojan horse. And what they said, we're going to bring you a gift. And that's how the enemy does. He wraps it in a gift. He wraps it in your, 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 your taste bud. He wraps it into what your tongue is palatable to, is wrapped in something that you desire. That is why, listen to what I'm saying, amen. <laughs> He's only gonna give it to you the way that you, you deserve, you, de you desire it, amen. That's why you say, God, deliver me. Deliver me from some things. Deliver me from situations. But here is the thing. If you don't ask God to change your taste buds, God help me to change my taste bud because what's, what's causing you to have that taste for that certain thing because you're trying to fulfill something. I want y'all to listen to me this morning. You're trying to fulfill something, amen, through your flesh. Amen, if you want, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying to fulfill something in, 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 in your flesh. And, and here's, the, here's the powerful thing about this, uh, Brother Randy, is that, we will act out this thing that we need by doing it for someone else because we want it or not just we want it, we need it. We need it. So, but what we do in order to kind of compensate getting it, we try to work it out. And do other, we call it good work. It's good work, but sometimes not godly work. It's good work, but it's not godly work. There's a thing we talked about in our ministry with the leadership and it's called the overdone strength. A overdone strength. And then an overdone strength is something that you do that's good, but then it gets to the point where now it's more about you than it is about what you're doing. Even say feeding the homeless, even taking care of people. You do it because maybe that was something that you did not receive, something that you lacked. So now you do it, which is a good thing, but then it's done to the point where now you're looking to, to feed yourself, to fill a void in your life. And whatever we try to feed ourselves, whenever we try to cook for ourselves, whenever we try to take the word of God, and make it in a way that, that that's, that's palatable to our flesh and not to our spirit. Because sometimes that's what we do. We take the word. And that's why we use the word sometimes, amen, against, against, against people, amen. We use the word against people. And you do that because that works towards your flesh. So what he does to frog, they start to turn the temperature up a little by little. The enemy is not going to just turn it up real hot, amen. <laughs> Because you want, uh, Minister Yolanda, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I want y'all to, y'all should really meditate on that word. Sometimes the things that you do, the things that you're driven, and I say this many times about being driven and being led by the spirit, it's very subtle. It is a spiritual warfare, y'all. Listen, listen, when you talk about spiritual warfare, and, 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 I, and I'm going to put it this way, whenever the United States got into wars, for the most part, they, from the air, we were successful. From the ships, when they launched missiles, we were successful. When it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat on enemy's territory, many times the results didn't work a lot in our favor. Not as much as it did from a distance. And some of us, we could do things from a distance, but when it comes, we could do things from a distance because when it's somebody else's stuff, somebody else's issue, we don't have a problem with it. We could help you, but I can't help myself. And the same thing you're trying to give to somebody else is what you really need for yourself, but you don't know where to get it from. And you should be getting it from God. We should be getting it from God. So the enemy will take that and he put you in that pot. He put you in that, that water that's conducive to, to your body temperature and to you, what's comfortable for you that don't, don't send off alarms. Amen. It doesn't send off alarms. And, and, and eventually he starts to turn up and we become cooked alive. And before we know it, we're cooked alive. Amen. So we have to be very careful. I'm, I'm listen. It doesn't matter what your title is, what your position is. We, if we find ourselves here, because again, I'm not referring to us as being wicked, but we could get out of the will of God. Amen. It says, let the, let the wicked forsake his ways and unrighteous man's his thoughts. Amen. And let him return unto the Lord and we, he will have mercy upon him. And our God, he will abundantly pardon. For guess what? In the eighth verse, 
For our thoughts, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Amen. You cannot take the word and make it your own recipe. You cannot make a, a recipe that's conducive to your flesh. Something that's not going to heal you, not going to deliver you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what I call it. I call it religion. Religion means, oh, I'm doing something. That's why when people say to me, you know what? I, I try. When you try, that means you actually have the ability to do it. But you're going to say, I'm going to do something, but I'm going to go but so far because, you know, I get afraid when I get to a certain point. Amen. We talk about healing. We talk about deliverance. We talk about being made whole. We're not talking about surface serving the Lord. We're talking about digging a little bit deeper in it. So that's why we have to be careful when it comes to the point of us relying on self-importance or, or self-importance self as far as what we do. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our ways. The only way we kind of realize that our ways isn't working when we discovered his ways. When you bump your head, how many of you have bumped your head and realized, you know what, God, that does not work. That was not it right there. And the thing about God, God will allow you to see it because sometimes you need to be able to compare it to something. You need to say, okay, I tried my way. Listen, your, 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 your efforts can be good. You could do what you feel is right. You could bake them a cake. You could do it. But God said, that's not the way to do it. God may say, don't bake them any cake. God may say, take your hand off them. Four seasons, but you got to trust me. You got to have faith in me that let me work things out in their life. Whether it's your husband, your spouse, your children, especially when people are close to your heartstring. When they're close to your heartstring, it's very challenging and difficult for us to take our hands off the situation. We always want to jump in. We always want to rescue them. And what we're really saying a lot of times, I need to be rescued. I need to be healed. I need to be delivered. But we don't allow God to do that. Amen. This is why we go to church and we just want to, you know, when we find out our ways do not work. Amen. It does not work in our human nature. Amen. And, and, and what, what we need from God, we need to stop and say, you know, why do I keep pressing the wrong button? Why I keep going? When we find ourselves going around that same mountain for 40 years, we do not see deliverance. Amen. Why? Because his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not my ways. In other words, and I, I want to reassure you of something that God will do what God said he's going to do. And he's able to do what he has to do. But you got to use the word. You got to take the word with the spirit. I've been, I've been on that. I've been talking about the anointing. I've been talking about the spirit and the word working together. And the reason why I'm driving that, no longer do we have time for fluff. No longer do we have time just for business as usual, church as usual. That's why God is shaking some things up. And, and it, it's going to take the Holy Spirit. It's going to take the Holy Spirit to undo certain things. I was talking to somebody the other day, and when I pointed something out, they said, oh, I didn't even realize that's what we do. Yeah, we do stuff. It seemed harmless. And it, it is, for the most part, it's harmless. There's some things that are harmless, but it's not effective. It's harmless, but it's not effective. And, and what's frustrating about that, if you have hope and you believe in God for something, and yet you're not seeing change, you're not seeing deliverance or anything in your life, it'll cause you to back off and try another way. So you could be doing something that's harmless, but it's not effective. Amen? Again, we got to go back to God's way. And in the ninth verse, it says, well, as heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts your ways. In other words, she's using that, not that you can measure the distance, but just a rea reality of, look, there's no way. Just, just forget about it. What, and, and this is what's incredible. We will pay a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, any amount of money. Go to a seminar, and you say, "Well, I don't pay that much. It only costs this." After you do plane fare, after you take time off your job, after you get a hotel, you do all. You would do this to invest in some information that someone either went to a book, did some research, da da da, all that. Their information is limited, but when it comes to God, because God not only is information, His knowledge, His wisdom. It goes beyond. And here's the most important thing is that he knows you. And, and when, when I love the song that says he knows my name, he knows my name. That song to me means that he knows me intimately. He knows my inner thoughts, my inner beings. He knows my proclivities. He knows my struggles. He knows where the damage took place. He knows what I need. He knows what is that thing that's in me, that lust that's drawing me out. He knows that. Hey, listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. I need y'all to, to listen to me. Amen. Hey, Linda, amen. I need to listen to me. This is real talk. This is real talk. And I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Amen. You got to get your, yourself before the face of God. This is prayer time. This is really prayer time because you have to guard yourself. 
You have to guard your heart. Amen. Because what the world is doing right now, they're trying to drain, the world's trying to drain you of everything. Even, I, I'm going to be honest, be careful your activity on social media, especially Facebook. And I say that, I say that, I say that because, see, Instagram is informational for the most part. It's a brief conversation. But Facebook, it's a whole culture. It's a whole culture. You got to be really careful. That's why even with uh, Twitter, it's, it's like whatever characters is, the 144 characters, and we've done, even though Twitter could be crazy too, but Facebook, there's emotions, there's a lot. So you have to be careful what you, you're, you're, you're exposing yourself to. And I know because of a limited movement and things like that, that has become the resource or the source of communication for many of us. But we have to be very careful. And I'm, I can never tell you what to do, but be careful what you're feeding yourself especially these next few weeks and few days because the enemy is coming and it's spiritual warfare. And, and it may look like one thing, but what he's doing, he's setting you up. He's setting you up for something else. So we want to make sure that our ways is God ways. And wait, and the thing about it is, 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 is we got to wait for God's timing. Wait for God's timing. You've been in God and took you through the operation. He's working on some things in your life, but you get, you coming from under anesthesia too quickly and you, you're still in pain. Don't come out too soon because you're still in pain. You're not getting everything that God is saying to you. You say, well, it's been five years. It's been 10 years. God said, no, 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 you're not ready yet. The reason why we're not ready for the most part, and you say, well, I've been in church this whole time, but what has been your relationship with God? What has been that relationship with God that you, you're supposed to have? How close is it in an intimate relationship where you're honest with God and you say, God, show me me? Amen. So we got to be careful. We got to wait for God's timing. Amen. We also, what he's trying to do, He's trying to bring out Christ-like characteristics. I think this is where we get stuck sometimes. When he says he made us his image and his likeness, and we think that's a controlling mechanism in which he keeps us from having freedom. But I'm going to tell you something. Real freedom is walking with Christ. Real liberty, you think you're free? Think about it when you were 18, 19 years old and you just thought you were grown and you thought you were free. I'm out of my mama's house. I'm out of my daddy's house, but now I'm free. Most of your mistakes <laughs> were made during that time. The dumb mistakes we made were during that time. And thank God for grace. Amen. Thank God for mercy upon us. We made a lot of mistakes because we thought we knew better because we thought we were grown, but we don't know. Amen. It's the same thing when we walk with God. You think we know, but you don't know. Amen. But I thank God that he knows me. Amen. And even in my flaws and even in my faults. Amen. You, you know, I, I want to I do what God, I, I, want, I want to say what God needs to say. I want to say what God needs to say. I don't, I don't want to just be talking, just to be talking, because at the end of the day, I will go. This is our responsibility. You got one responsibility. One responsibility is to believe God. That's truly it. If you look at everything that God requires of you, and if you believe God, uh, uh, Elder Chestnut, let me tell you something. You believe God, you have faith in God, your healing and your deliverance. I want to see people healed. I want to see people healed. Brother James, I want to see people healed. I want to see people delivered. But let me tell you something. If you get healed, money come. If you get delivered, money come. How you give and why you give will open up a flow. I talked about the anointing of God. Allow it to flow through your life. You are anointed to do a work. But many of us have the Saul syndrome. Well, we think the anointing requires applause. We think the anointing requires a pat on the back. No, it's not. Let me tell you what the anointing would do. The anointing will have you preach. The anointing will have you sing. The anointing will have you do some work at the church and you walk away feeling unappreciated. Check, check your heart. Check your heart. Check your heart. How many of these preachers I have on here right now, they could tell you. You preach and you, you when you finish, everybody shout, they're excited, and you feel terrible. You feel terrible because you know what? That's that war in your members. That's that part of your flesh that want to feel some kind of affirmation through that. Amen. And we would say, oh, to God be the glory. And we would say to ourselves, you know what? I messed up. I made a mistake. And we, we would count our mistakes. That's why when a singer will get up and sing, and, and hit a wrong note or can't find their note, it throws them off so much. But here's where 
Your focus got to come. It's like, you know, I love God and I'm just going to keep praising him because many times I've said words out of my mouth and I heard them in my head and I just kept going. And somebody said, well, you made a mistake. I know I made a mistake, but my goal is the people in front of me because I have to give them the word because to me, and I tell the preachers all the time, is that when you preaching, it's about you got to see the people as though they're on fire and you got water in your mouth. You got the word in your mouth to put on. So you got to speak it. I don't care if it come out stuttering. I don't care if it come out broken. I don't care if it come out any kind of way. You got to get the word out there. Amen. That's why sometimes we look for the polished word. We look for the finished word. That's wonderful. That's wonderful for these lofty words and these magnificent words. And you got lighting going on in the back of you. And you got the chandeliers. But at the end of the day, the anointing destroys the yoke. But I got to be able to allow God to flow through me. I got to know it's not about me for real, for real. Amen. That God gets the glory because what it's going to do is going to produce fruit. At the end of the day, the evidence, the evidence that I'm walking with God, the evidence that I'm striving with God, the evidence that I'm living a life or striving to live a life is when the fruit is being produced. It's not about the outward applause and how people honor me and things like that. Yes, people should honor you and respect you and things like that. But if nobody ever give you a dime for cleaning the church, if nobody ever give you a pat on the back, if you're, listen, we trip. And I, if y'all been guilty, y'all can repent right on this. You know, back in the day when they had programs, they would hand out in service. And some churches still do it, right? They hand out programs. And on the back of the program, sometimes they put down who gave tithes and who gave offering the week before. I've seen people totally lose their mind. Mom, I, I need to talk to the bishop. What do we need to talk to the bishop? It's, it's an emergency. It's an emergency. I need to talk to the bishop. It's an emergency. You go down there and they said, um, I, I got the, the program today and my name wasn't on the back of it. Okay, clerical error. Maybe it's a clerical error. Or maybe God trying to show you something because that $10 you gave for tithes wasn't really tithes. You did it so you could get your name. Why do you do what you do? What is your motive? What is your motive? This is why we don't see healing. This is why we don't see deliverance because our motives are wrong. If you're not getting the results, listen, listen, listen. If, if, if you have not planted seeds, why are you looking in the garden for some, something to come up? Why are, you looking, why are you looking for something to come up? If you're not planning, you, you reap what you sow. I'm right there, right there. Sister Donna, we reap what we sow. We don't like it, but I'm going to tell you something what I love about God. I'm going to tell you what I love about God. We will reap what we sow because that is the principle of God. That's reciprocity at the end of the day. But what I love about God is that under grace, when we reap what we sow, we get a lesson from it. God don't allow you to feel the pain like you would when you was not under the blood. Amen. I thank God. I thank God because I'm reaping some things I've sown. Amen. But now God said, okay, now we're going to do the lesson. Now sit down. Now when you out there on your own and you just reaping, you just reaping, you just reaping. And let me tell you, it's the powerful thing about this right here. When you reap what you sow, it's your testimony under grace. When you reap what you have sown, it becomes your testimony. Amen. I messed up. I made a mistake. That becomes your ministry. That becomes your ministry. Listen, I love preachers. I love they articulate. They can put things together. It's all smooth and it's wonderful. But when it's from a broken and a contrite heart, when I've gone through something and I messed up and God brought me back in, amen, go back to that scripture I was talking about. When you don't want to be known as the wicked, but we messed up. We thought we knew. We thought we knew, but we knew you didn't know your ways. And as you grow in God, Amen. You will get a you will get a you will get a second grader gonna try to tell a fifth grader, you know, how to do this. It's like you don't know. You don't my ways are not your ways. He's the master teacher. Amen. And when you get to the point where you're unteachable, and I talked about that last night, y'all gotta learn how to get fat. Y'all gotta get fat. Amen. Y'all not fat enough. Y'all say, listen, pastor, I'm already squeezing. I've got this COVID weight and I got this pandemic weight. Some of that was pre-pandemic, pre-COVID, but you got to get, that's right, brother Derek. You have to wear your story. You got to wear, it's like, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because if it had not been for that, I would not be where I'm at. God, oh, come on, come on, come on. I would, you got to get fat, sister Tammy. You got to get fat. You got to be faithful. Amen. You got to get faithful. You got to be available. Amen. And you got to be teachable. You got to be faithful. You got to be, you got to be available and you got to be teachable. And because we're not fat, we, we, and you know, what the problem is we're fat in our flesh and not fat in the spirit. I'd rather be this big. Amen. And, and be fat in the things of God. Faithfulness, availability, and be teachable. 
When you when you allow yourself to be those things, that's right. You allow to I walk around and we put on a shirt. I'm fat. <laughs> God, I'm fat. I'm faithful. Stick around. That's why I said if if if, if you if you only looking for the applaud of man, if you only looking for for a pat on the back, you looking for recognition, you looking for titles. This is where people get messed up at. They are so title driven, especially in the African American church. We're so title driven. It, it does that, that title does not make you. You make the title. As a matter of fact, you walk in that office before you get in the office. And what should be happening is they recognize who you are, and they say, "Okay, because of where you walk." Listen, I don't need a title to do what I do. I do because it's the grace, it's the anointing that's on my life. I do it because this is how God feeds me. Amen. If I never put a label on it, you identify what it is. Amen. So you have to walk in God. Be faithful when people are not faithful to you. Be faithful to God. Why? I'm going to tell you why. He's faithful to you. He was faithful to you when you were not faithful to God. He was there all the time. My mother sings that song all the time, all the time. He was there before you said, yes, Lord. He was there before you sang the songs of Zion. He was there covering you and keeping you. Amen. You got to be available. You were in the church, but you're not available to God. You're available to man. Amen. Because availability, listen, <laughs> salvation and your walk with God is not a part-time job. Your, your hours are not on Sunday from 11 to whatever time you're in church. It's not doing Bible class. But your faithfulness and your availability is 24-7. God don't need weekend um, lovers. He don't need part-time lovers. He needs full-time. You either in or you're not in. Amen. That means, listen, listen. And that's the thing. If you're on a clock, if you're on a clock, that don't mean I'm one way this time and one way here. When I talked about honor, if y'all have not listened to that message, go back and listen to Sunday message about honor. Because what, what, what honor is, is really how I live, how I walk, what I do, the decisions I make. Does it honor God? And not towards God, but the things of God. This Sunday, I will be talking about the seven areas that we, we, we need to show honor. Well, it's really seven areas we need to show honor. And you're going to be surprised at some of them because some of us are messing up. And we're not honoring God because we're taking our thoughts and our ways and we're saying, okay, God, this is how it should be done. No, whatever we do, it should be honorable God. We know the one about say, honor your mother and father. Why? That we have, our life may be long, but there's other ones as well when it comes to honor. And why? how are we to honor somebody that don't deserve honor? Amen. Out of faith. When you understand your purpose, you understand your destiny, you're going to remain faithful. You're going to remain available. You do not clock out on God. Do not clock out on God. Amen. You skipping lunch. You you work. Listen, do not clock out on God. Why are you not available for God to use you? You got an attitude? You have an attitude? What did God do to you? Amen. I, I need to just go right, right now. Whoever's on here right now, what did God ever do to you besides love you? Why have we, we, we've drawn back? Why are we shrink, shrinking, shrinking back um, from God and doing the things of God? I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what situation you're in. Whatever you do, if you, you, if you had a great job and I got to go to work, listen, I go to work. I got to go to work when I get off of this, amen? But whenever I do, I'm going to make sure I handle my father's business. I got to be about my father's business because guess what? The anointing of God makes you do this. The anointing of God said, wake up. Not my long clock. Get up, Odom. Because I can easily say, snooze. I'm not doing this. But God has put this assignment on me. And I say, Lord, what is this? Amen. But listen to what I'm about to say. Make sure it's all God. Make sure it's all God. Even when you're doing good, it ain't always got to be God. Even when you're doing good. Now, this is good and this is God. How you do it. Why you do it. Amen. And I got to be teachable. I gotta be faithful. I gotta show up. I gotta come to class. I gotta come to class. Y'all come to class and you come to class, you put your shades on, you sitting like that. Some of y'all can sleep with your eyes open. And some of y'all do that right in church. You sleep with your eyes open, you're looking right at me. And you sleep. And if you get close enough, you can hear you snoring. You didn't check out. You didn't check out. You didn't check out. Make sure you're available. Make sure I, I don't have to come find you. Make sure God ain't got to come find you. But God, I'm available to you. Talked about the story about Samuel, young Samuel, when he was first called by God. And he kept hearing God's voice and he would go to Eli, who was his, his oh, he was teaching him. And he was kept saying it was Eli because he had not learned the voice of God. And, and being available, being available is learning the voice of God. Learn the voice of God. How do I know it's God? Early on, I get it because there was time when God would say to me or I hear in the spirit or in my heart, pressed on my heart that, okay, get that person $20. But God, you know they owe me 20 already. Give them $20. Give him $20. But here again, make sure it's God. It is not you. Make sure y'all ready for this. Listen to me right now. 
I need you to lean into your cameras. <laughs> Make sure you don't have the spirit of a rescuer on you. Make sure you don't have the spirit of a rescuer. What is a rescuer? Rescuer is always people that's trying to save somebody. You know why? You know why you do that? Because you want to be rescued. You want to be saved. That's why some of your love is off. That's why you end up in relationships trying to love people that don't even have a capacity to receive the love that you want to give them. But you know why? Because I've been seeking this love and I have not been able to attain it. So what I do, I try to substitute it. Amen. By overdoing it, overdone. Come on, somebody. Nobody told you how to log in this morning. Nobody told you. How. You jump on here this is morning, man. You're going to get fed. You're going to get fed. You're going to get fed the word of God. This is real talk. This is going to help you to get healing and get delivered. I need you to be in your prayer room with that what I just gave you. I need you to go before God. Amen. <laughs> you can't. He asked me quite. <laughs> You know, you know why? You, you know, you, I'm going to tell you, just like, I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to tell you how. Because I brought it up. I brought it up. And God's going to start showing you those things. Oh, that's a good question. She asked a good, good question. She asked a wonderful question. How can we make sure <laughs> we be fat? Amen. Uh, part of when you know that you're doing it and it's overdone or it's not as productive, if when you continually do this, <laughs> Sister Teacher, I see you. <laughs> when you do this, that person or that situation always take it away and never adding to you. If all every time you do this, that, that means God is not really in it. Because what God is going to do, I said being fruitful. The thing about the anointing, the thing about the anointing, the anointing is fruitful. It's going to be bring some the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. <sighs> How can I say this without being offensive? I don't care how much you shout around your church. I don't care how bad your band is. I don't care how well your choir sing, your worship leaders. I don't care how wonderful you preach. If there's no fruit produced in that, that orchard, what are we planting? If there's no growth spiritually, I'm not talking about we got four and five churches, but spiritually, nobody, I need you to grow. When you grow, the ministry grows. No, we may not increase in numbers, but we're going to increase in spirituality. We're going to see results. We're going to get more done with less. So when you come, listen, I can only speak from where I sit. I can't speak for other pastors. The word that God's going to give me is going to challenge your soul to grow. Not to embarrass you, not to make you feel less, but say, come a little bit higher. And when I mean cut, I'm not measuring you. I'm not measuring. I'm not checking off a list because that's another thing. Some of us, some of us are so merit-based. Merit-based, you know what that is? Merit-based is like, you know what? And I'm going to say this without, this ain't shade. This is not shade. It's my, more my personal and what my observation down through the years. Sometimes your accomplishments are not accomplishment. They get recognition. And they're recognition because that's a merit-based performance. And that's what we end up doing in the church. God, look what I did. God, look what I did. Listen, listen, I love education. Get as much education. Learn as much as you can. Amen. But why are you doing what you're doing? Am I doing this? Because I want to prove I'm worthy. You've already been worthy. Amen. But you got to recognize those things. This is why, step back. I told you I'm about healing. I'm about, my ministry is a deliverance ministry. Yeah, I ain't come up there with no, no blessed towel and no whole, the oil and I'm pouring it on your head. Right here, as I reach my hands out, this word that's going for is going to heal you. It's going to deliver because it's the word of God. It's the word of God. But you got to grow in the things of God. In, in your personal space. Everybody don't grow the same way. Your experience and what you have gone through in life was designed. That was the, the manure. That was the stuff to fertilize your life. That, that, that disappointment, those letdowns, that's why the Lord said, let go of that bitterness. Because what you're holding on to, oh God, Jesus, help us right now. What you're holding on was only designed to grow you, not to destroy you. Even though the enemy meant it for evil. God said, I'm going to turn around and use it for your good. Because the only way it works, I got to take this word spirit, I got to take the word. And when I take the spirit, I take the word, and I put it on top of that, growth comes. There's a seed that's been planted. There's a seed been planted. The enemy thought he was going to wipe you out. There's no way. There's no way most of us should even be up here in our right mind. Some of the things you have gone through, and we have suppressed it. We have not dealt with it. But guess what? You acted out. You're crying out from your soul. Help me. Help me. 
And you do it by doing certain things you overdo. It. That's why it's like it's good, but then it it, it 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 sometimes gets you in trouble. It gets you in trouble. It causes you pain. It causes you disappointment. You need to go, my ways are not your way. God some of y'all some slow down. And some of y'all tell him, he said, hurry up. What you waiting for? What you looking for? Amen. I thank God. If you ever notice in the back, there's a light. And, you know, I miss the techie sometimes. Amen. And that light is my light when it's time to come on. It comes on at like 658. And then it reminds me, it's like, okay, it's time to get ready. It also, it goes off five minutes before I was finished so I can remind myself. So if you ever see that in the back, that's what's happening. Amen. So in, in all that I'm saying is, is this. On this weekend and even further, I want you to be in prayer about those things. God show me and reveal to me the things that that's causing me pain. That's causing me this one. That's not bringing back a return on my investment. And what I mean by that, I'm sowing seeds. I'm sowing seeds. You're sowing a thing that's not bringing back fruit. Even, let me tell you something, even as a pastor and as leaders, amen, many times when you sow into people, it does not mean that because they're not responding the way you do. You, why you keep going there? And, and it's a lesson, it's a lesson I had to learn as a pastor. It's a lesson I had to learn as a pastor because that dysfunctional part of me, <laughs> Minister Yolanda, Elder Chestnut, that dysfunctional part mixed in with the godly part, that's why sometimes you go further than you're supposed to. What do the kids say? You're doing the most. You're doing the most. And sometimes you're doing the most because God didn't tell you to do that. You're mixing. You're mixing. Amen. Stop being a rescuer and say, God, help me because I can't help myself. That's what we have to do. Amen. It, 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 we, we can help people, but did God tell you to do that? When we do what we do, why did we do what we do? And I mean, you have the extremes of it where people just doing it for PR, publicity, or things like that. And I'm not judging anybody's heart. You know, people have the whole thing when you help the homeless, you know, about people taking pictures. No, I would never want to expose someone's situation. I would never do that. What I do want to do is demonstrate to the world is that the church is acting because the first thing you say, what is the church doing? So then we don't say anything. You say, what is the church doing? So we would show people, listen, if you're about your father's business, you're interesting in doing mission work. It's not wrong going to countries and doing mission work and showing that you built wells and things like that. What's your intention behind what you do? What's your intention why you don't let nobody know? What is that about? So again, it's about, it's a heart matter. It's a heart matter. So let us, as we grow, and on Tuesday, we're going to start in John 15 and 8. Let me just read that real quick before we close out. Amen. Because at the end of the day, the evidence that we need or should have, amen, to show what we're doing, what I say, uh, John 15. Yeah, John 15. I'm going to totally in the wrong book. John 15 and 8. Amen. One simple scripture. One simple scripture, and this is to you. This is to you. Um, it says, wherein is my father glorified that you shall bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. Another translation says, when you bear or produce much fruit, my father is honored and glorified, and you shall improve yourself to be true followers of mine. A real disciple bear fruit, and bearing fruit Go back to the fruit of the spirit. Is there love around you? Is there unconditional love? And that, 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 that unconditional love can be challenging. Because in unconditional love, the Bible tells us as husband and wife. Husbands, and it says wives, honor your husbands, right? And, wife, and husbands, love your wife. That's unconditional love. Your honoring and your loving is unconditional. Go make those biscuits. Go buy her those flowers or whatever you need to do. I don't care what they've done. If you want to see the Holy Spirit flow, you want to see the fruit of the Spirit, stop choosing, picking and choosing. This is not the golden corral of salvation. You don't get to walk up and pick the parts you like. You don't get to pick the parts you like. I don't like that. I don't like, but you got to be like the prophet said, eat the whole roll. Take all of the word in, amen, and whether you like it or not, it's working out for your good. It's going to heal you. Your faith is going to lead you to trusting. Your trusting is going to cause you to be obedient. Your faith, as it grows, we go from faith to faith, to glory to glory. When you go from faith to faith, look at that, to glory to glory. When I believe God, when I believe God, God get the glory. There's fruit. I become his disciple. I become teachable. I become fat. I'm faithful. I'm available. I'm teachable. I'm faithful. I'm available. I am a disciple. I'm a follower. We're so interested in being members. You forget to be a disciple. 
I'm not looking for members. I'm looking for disciples of Christ. If you're a disciple of Christ, that means, yes, I, 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 I serve at whole life, but I am a disciple to the kingdom of God. That's what it's about. Uh, uh, one of my preacher friends said, can you, this brother come over and help us out? I said, sure, as long as he's in his place and we're not need him to do what he needs. And he was kind of surprised. I'm like, no, why should you be surprised? We are disciples of Christ. You're not serving Buddha and Allah. If you serve Buddha and Allah, I'm going to say no, because that's not what we're doing. But when it's for the kingdom of God, why not? Amen. Why not be able to pull? And I mean, I, I'm, honestly, I must say this. It, a lot of found it strange culturally, culturally, and, and it's regional culturally that we don't do that in the Northwest. I mean, the Northeast. We don't understand about collaboration and working together. I, it, it, it's, it's baffling to me. And you sitting there with your two, and he's over there with his three. And let's take hours and put together and let's make things work together. We need to have one, we, we need to have one supplier of this, and we all going to, we need to have one lawyer. We got to get that thing. It's a cultural issue. Amen. But we must produce fruit. There should be more joy. There should be more peace. It's gonna be war. It's gonna be disagreement. Amen. It's gonna be those things. But we should start seeing the fruit. I don't care. You got 2,000 members. I'm not impressed. If the presence of God is not there, now when I mean the presence of God, I don't mean that you have artificially <laughs> produced an atmosphere through music and exaltation to get on my emotions, because that's easy to do. That's easy. To do. I'm not impressed by that. You getting up and the music going and you overwhelming my emotions and you taking me, you playing the strings. I know, please, that, that, that's manipulation. But let me tell you something. I'm going to close on this. I'm going to close up. I did, and, and Minister Sade and, and, and Minister Malcolm attended this, the College of Prayer. Uh, the one we attended was in Queens, New York. And when we got there, it was, uh, I believe it was mostly Spanish, some blacks that were there. They were in the band and they were playing. Let me say this. They were not the most accomplished musicians. They weren't the best singers. They were not the best. And it's not judgment. I'm going to prove a point to you. They were sincere. They were sincere. The love they had for God came through how they play. It wasn't about, I don't know how to play well. What are the people thinking? When you get in the way, when you become more concerned about you, the oil stops flowing. But when you say, God, to God be the glory for all the things that he has done, it allows the oil to flow. And the anointing came through there. There was pure worship. It wasn't artificial. It wasn't, it wasn't we do a slow song, we do a fast song. We just gonna allow it to flow. But if you become so concerned about, oh, they missed that key, they missed that note. Yeah, we want those things because we want to give God our best. But when it does not happen, we should not be, lose who we are and our purpose of why we're doing what we're doing. Amen. I want to, I think I still have it up here. No, I don't think I do. Amen. Amen. I wanted to put up here and I don't have it. I think I deleted it by mistake. Amen. Uh, we're doing... Um, it's called uh, Hope for the Holidays, Hope for the for Holidays. And we're asking everyone who's part of whatever we're doing to be a part of that. And we're asking, we're looking for at least 50 people, 50 people to donate at least $25. And what we're doing, we're putting together boxes and bags and gifts for families over the holidays between Christmas and Thanksgiving. We put it at five, it's probably gonna be 10. It depends on how we get the participation. We're gonna make sure it happens either way. But we also need you to give us the names of some families, amen, that you know that may be in dire strait. They may have hit hard time. We know there's a lot of people, this unemployment is about to get really funny. Uh, things are about to get shaky. This is gonna be a very, 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 very challenging holiday season. Very hard challenge, emotionally and mentally. A lot of people still leery about going out. So please, we want to at least bless five to 10, 15 families. This holiday season between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we're gonna do it over uh, the two holiday periods. If we deplete everything we have for Thanksgiving, we will come back and ask another 50 people. Be, be Jump on this. Don't even hesitate. You can go to Cash App. You can do it through Cash App. Um, you can do it that way. Uh, I don't know if they're able to do it in Giveify, but I want you to put in there, Put just put hope in, in the subject matter, and we know that this money is not your regular giving, but it's towards this holiday season because we want to be a blessing, and it can be done. There's great work that can be done through collaboration. Amen. It does not matter how far you are. Amen. That's the beauty of this technology as well. So you can go to Cash App and put it to $25 and you can invite your friends, go to your job. Say, listen, we're trying to do hope for the holidays. Amen. Because we're trying to encourage someone um, about these things. There's some other projects that's coming up and you can also see our sister Jada 
or our minister Sheila for this as well, or any of our elders or ministers. Um, there's some other things that's taking place. They're doing some food giveaway at Garrett Mountain as well. Um, and what happened? Yes, it's Project Hope. Hashtag Project Hope. There you go. Um, Garrett Mountain, there's other organizations that's doing um, food giveaway. So what we're probably going to do is ask some people, let's uh, either go pick up the food for the people and bring it back to it uh, or bring the people to there. Because one of the things I believe is this. I do not, I do not want to be a person that's just a rescuer. I want to give people hope. I want to teach them how to fish. Not only do I want to teach them how to fish, I have to provide a pond for them to fish out of. So we have to create a culture. I got to create a uh, sister teacher, even you are all my social workers. It, we have to create opportunity for people to have something. That means we give them the training. We could do online training. We could do that. I may call some of you guys in to do a talk about certain things. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Kathy about doing something online for grieving because that's a ministry is called Good Morning that she does. And she's really launching it, relaunching it. And we need to have these things in place. It's not just about the spiritual part. It's about the emotionally and mental part of all that we do. It's about resources as well. Right now, even for unemployment, I work there. You cannot come in the building. Probably won't be open till March because it's so backed up. So people are falling on hard times. They have lost many loved ones. So it's going to be very, very emotional. So that's why we avail ourselves, amen, um, in platforms like this. And this is why I tell the people, God, especially whole life, listen, if your mother and father cook and there's food on the table, y'all know how it is. Now I ain't talking about y'all parents today because I don't know what we've done. We soft. Sister Felicia, we are so soft. You know, back in the day, if your mother made beans, guess what was for dinner? Beans was for dinner. You know, it's like, I don't eat that. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be transparent. I was that kid. I'm not eating that. I ain't no beans. I would not eat beans, I'm going to tell you, at 19 years old because it represented my poverty and I refused to eat it. Guess what? I fasted that night. I went on a fast that night. My wife's like, oh, my, my, my mother was like, oh, you're not? Okay, when that kitchen clean, that, 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 that everything put away, the dish washed, they get done. And I wouldn't eat because I would try to prove a point because, you know, that was the drive that was in me. That was that she said, you're, you're a tourist to bull and you're stubborn. That's what she used to say. <laughs> but that was that Peter's mentality. That was a tenacity to stand up for right. It wasn't about the beans. It was about what they represented it to me. They represented that we didn't have much. And I was like, this is not a good thing. Now, let me tell you, Instagram told me they, they paused because there's a poor connection. That means you're past your time, sir. But again, I want to thank each and every one of you. Amen. <laughs> we had to eat what was cooked. There was no five different meals. Amen. Uh, we ate what, we, what was available to us. So again, thank you guys. Please be a part of that. 50 people, $25. Uh, hashtag Project Hope. Uh, for the holidays so we can bless someone and we'll let you. And again, please let us know those families, those families. If you know, and listen, if, you, if you're if you that family, if you're in, in dire strait, do not let pride, amen? Charity starts at home. If you're in need and you're, you, listen, just, just inbox me, first lady, one of the ministers, and, and just do that. Please, please do that, amen? And and if you know, fam, we gonna make this happen one way or another because we all got something. We got, we got, we ain't doing beans no more. I and it's ironic. Now all I do is eat beans, but I eat them because it's a different purpose. Father, we thank you for your love and kindness, your tender mercy. We thank you, God, for who you are and what you mean to us. And we ask you, Father, to let this word fall on good ground. Let it fall on ground that's going to be fruitful, God. Let us consider all the things that's been said. Even go back and let's watch this again. If we miss something that was vital, that we can meditate on this word both day and night. Father, as we go to our separate destination, we ask you to cover us and keep us. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen, amen. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name.